listening to the Post-Apocalyptic Media Podcast, your source for all the latest post-apocalyptic news. Hello and welcome back to the Post-Apocalyptic Media Podcast. I'm your host, Sean. I'm the senior editor here at postapocalypticmedia.com, and this is episode number 70 of the show. Uh, In this week's podcast, I'm going to talk about uh, all the latest news, whether it has to do with movies or TV shows or comic books or games, especially. I do a lot of game stuff. It's all here on the show and on the website. So if you want to learn more, of course, go to the website, which is at postapocalyptic.com. Now, let's get into this. Let's get into this good news about crazy bad stuff, right? Like the apocalypse. Uh, This first little bit of news is for a there's an audio drama that came out a few months ago we talked about it on the show many times called impact winter now impact winter is an audible exclusive it was kind of a big deal because it's you know it's from uh the guy who wrote pacific rim and stuff like that you know pretty big writer audible is big of course owned by amazon all that stuff and this was not just an audio book you know not just a reading of an audio book but it's an actual audio drama. It has sound effects and multiple actors and uh, things like that. It's really, really well done. And it, it, kind of, it kind of blew up, you know, to be honest. We, uh, we reviewed it here on the site, Tina did, and uh, she and I talked about it on the podcast a few times. I really enjoyed it. Um, it was a little more vampire, though, I guess, that I'm used to reading. You know, I, re- I read the Anne Rice books <laughs> 25 years ago, but... Um, you know, with the post-apocalyptic spin, it was, it was actually really good. It was, it was pretty cool. So that is getting a pre prequel comic. Uh, IGN has an exclusive look at it. They show a couple pages from the, the comic, but it's supposed to go back. Now, if you've, if you've listened to the audio drama, I'm not going to spoil anything, but there's uh, a main character in there named Darcy. And so the comics are supposed to go back and kind of look at her life right before I think everyone gets out of the underground area that they're in and and kind of encounters the vampires. It's kind of like right when everything is starting, a little bit after the asteroid hits and kind of destroys the Earth. So, again, no spoilers because it says a lot of that on the back of the... uh, the back of the... uh, what, what is the back of an audiobook? The back of an audiobook is what it's on right there. If you turn... if you turn the audio drama over it's on the back. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. So <laughs> let's get into this next little thing. Now this here, this is something on our site that was written by a new writer. We have a new writer on the site who is doing more of like survival stuff, right? Because we like to cover, um, you know, we, we cover the media side, right? We cover the movies and the TV shows and the comics and the games and all that stuff. But we also like to, to cover kind of a, like a preparation for a real apocalypse. And it's kind of a unique spin we have on the site. I mean, a lot of, you know, there's a lot of entertainment sites that cover, um, you know, one or the other. And we kind of like to do both. We're interested in both. And we figure a lot of people who are probably interested in post-apocalyptic fiction are probably also going to be interested in the nonfiction side as well. I know that it kind of narrows the, the playing field down a little bit, but... We have that. We have them both on the site. So anyway, we have a new writer named Bailey Higgins, and uh, she's uh, written quite a few books about... She has a whole series called Heroes of the Apocalypse. Um, It's like a zombie apocalypse series. And so she wrote this this article on our site about getting a bug out bag put together. A bug out bag, of course, is... You know, it's like a bag that you have prepared and ready to go in case something happens. It doesn't have to be you know, a zombie apocalypse. It doesn't have to be a nuclear, uh, you know, bomb attack or anything like that. It, it can be anything from a house fire to a tornado, you know, uh, earthquake, things like that. Things that might kind of displace you from your, from your home. You grab this bug out bag, take off, and you have, you know, first aid kit, all that kind of stuff in your bag, survival gear, Um, fire starting kits, stuff like that. Uh, So what she did was she got together this list of kind of her favorite 
um, the basics, you know, the things that you would need in a bag like that. You don't want to go overboard. You don't want it to be so heavy that you you encumber yourself. Um, so this list is is a very good list. I really like this. I'm interested in stuff too. You know, I, I absolutely love survival and prepping stuff. So kind of like, you know, me personally reading this list, I'm like, yeah, this is really good. I like this. She has stuff like three days worth of food, but not like, you know, you're not putting like a turkey dinner in there. You're putting like protein bars, trail mix, nuts, dried fruit, granola, nut butter, fry, uh, freeze dried meals, you know, MREs, stuff like that is really good. Uh, eating utensils. You always, oh, how many times have you been camping and you forget the eating utensils? You forget a fork and knife and spoon or, or bowl or, you know, stuff like that. And they have collapsible ones to save space. That's the, that's the big thing. Space and weight you want to save. Anyway, you can go through this whole list. Uh, I'll link this in the uh, in the notes for today. Great article. Really happy to have uh, Bailey on the site and and writing. It's really cool. All right, this next one. This, we're going we're going back to fiction here. Um, there's a new show actually. As of the time I'm recording this on April 20th, uh, this show just came out. <clears throat> it's on Netflix. It's called Yakim Yakimos. Yakamos, something like that. Yakamos S245. I don't know how to pronounce it. I fail. But the essential uh, the essential plot of this is it's based on, it's actually a spin-off of another Netflix series called Into the Night. Um, Into the Night is a is a show, it's a series about um, these people are on, I think they're on a bus. I haven't seen it, but I, I think I, I saw a little bit about it. And they have to avoid the sunlight, basically. They have to do all they can to avoid sunlight because the sun is part of the apocalypse. So this is like a spinoff in that same world, but in a different area. You know, I mean, Walking Dead does that all the time. Um, Black Summer did that with, uh, uh, what was that? The Z one, Z Nation. Um, so this is kind of in that same world. And, and this group of researchers, they're bi marine biologists, they discover that the sun when it comes up is going to kill everyone and so it's nighttime they track down somehow they track down a submarine and they get on board and the submarine goes you know um, descends to avoid the sun right it works it's great they survived well now they have to survive the people on the ship right they have to survive the people the you know the sailors on the ship and this is a turkish movie so it's all in turkish and you and there's subtitles there's english subtitles um which can get distracting i know that there's a big like sub versus dub kind of debate um dub is i usually like sub subtitle stuff because the overdub stuff oh man sometimes it's really bad they have really bad uh, voice actors on these things so you don't have to worry about that in this one but then you have to look down at the bottom of your screen and try to follow along while also watching the movie so that is a whole different podcast i could sit here and talk about that the whole time um but it looks good this looks like good especially if you've seen into the night uh you know knowing that this is kind of the same same universe right all right, so more news on the Netflix front. We have Love, Death, and Robots will have a volume three. If you have not seen Love, Death, and Robots, it's really good. It's uh, it's like an anthology film series on Netflix. It's been out for a few years, but the third season, they're calling it third volume of it because it's anthology, uh, will come out in May of this year. So we have that to look forward to. Uh, I'm excited about that. I'm a huge, huge fan of anthologies. Huge fan. I, you know, comic book anthologies, movie anthologies, book anthologies. Huge fan. I love that stuff. I love being able to sit down and take in an entire story, you know, in like 20, 30 minutes and not have to be like, I mean, I love novels. Don't get me wrong. Uh, and, and, you know, full length movies, but I, do, I tend to watch things in chunks. I tend to read things in chunks. I, t I novels, I read one page at a time and it takes me for freaking ever. <laughs> but, uh, and, and it gets crazy because I'll go back sometimes. I'm the kind of person that reads like two or three novels at a time because I have one on my phone, on the Kindle. I have one by my bed, you know, a regular book. And then so I'll go back and forth and I'll be like, is this the one where this was happening? No. So anthologies of short stuff is right you know that's me that's what i need i love that kind of stuff 
Um, and Love, Death, and Robots is great, great, great series. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited about this. Third volume in May. Um, there is no, let's see. It says there's currently 26 episodes, yeah, between the first two volumes. Uh, and, of course, Black Mirror is very similar to that. If you like, I mean, who doesn't like Black Mirror? It's incredible. Oh, May 20th. So this will come out on May 20th. Love, Death, and Robots. Uh, this is a little bit of news here. Just a little. Not huge news, but it's it's pretty cool. I, I wanted to mention it. Uh, Twisted Metal, of course, the game from the 90s um, about basically vehicular combat. And, the, you know, you see that, like, scary clown on the front is always iconic, that ice cream truck with the clown and all that. Well... It's actually, it's getting a show, right? It's going to be, <laughs> it's going to be a show that's coming out. And it has like Will Arnett. Will Arnett, you might know from Arrested Development. He has a cooking show. I forgot what it's called. My wife watches it. Uh, he's a funny guy. Or no, I think it's the Lego show. Yeah, I think it's the Lego, uh, Lego Masters. That's what it is. Um, he's the host of that. And he's a funny guy. So it's going to be kind of a comedy uh, well, anyway, so they, they announced all of these actors before. They already said that they're going to have Will Arnett and they're already going to have, like, Anthony Mackie is going to be in it. Well, now they announced a director. They don't say how many episodes he's going to direct, but he will... This is Katao Sakurai, Sakurai I think it's called uh, pronounced. Um, he has done, like, the Eric Andre show. Netflix had a show called Bad Trip. He wrote and, and directed that. So he's going to be directing this which I think kind of plays a little bit more into this comedy side of Twisted Metal. Um, it kind of gives more, you know, credibility to the to the comedy side of it and, and, and shows that that's the direction it's going. You know, it's going to be a, a mainly comedy show. But it's also post-apocalyptic. Now, is this going to give, like, the other post-apocalyptic comedy shows, like um, Tales of the Dead, you know, the, the new... Uh, uh, Walking Dead anthology that's supposed to have, have a comedy spin. Is that going to give it a run for its money? I don't know. But it's pretty cool to see uh, that this is coming together. Because, you know, the Twisted Metal TV show is... It, it's been talked about for a while. You know, I mean, heck, that movie... I mean, the game is 30 years old, almost. Oh, yeah, next week or next year it'll be 30 years old. Wow, that's crazy. Anyway... That's uh, that's crazy stuff. Um, okay, let's go on to the next little bit. Again, this is a little a little thing I wanted to mention. I thought it was interesting. Um, there's a game coming out in May. Again, everything's coming out in May, and this is May twentieth too. This is uh, the same as that other um, that other movie, or Love, Death, and Robots. So there's a zombie game coming out about zombies in World War II. Now, that's not really an original, for, you know, it, it's not the, an original idea that has the first time anyone's ever done that. There's, it's been done a few times. It's usually Nazis who are z turned into zombies and they come back and, you know, you have to kill them twice. Um, and that's kind of what this is. It's a, it's called They Are Coming. And it's in the description, it says the war is just about over for the Nazi regime and the final ditch effort to defeat the Allies and in the final ditch, uh, ditch effort, uh, the Reich releases their secret weapon, the Wunderwaffe. Wunderwaffe. That's what it is. Wunderwaffe. Uh, or in other words, flesh-eating zombies that want brains. So it's kind of like the, the Nazis have zombies, zombie Nazis, as their secret weapon, their last resort that they're going to unleash on the Allies. And so that's, I don't know, if you're into that, that sounds like a pretty cool uh, little game. It's a, it's a top-down game. It's very, it actually, it's like a top-down game, but it looks similar to something like uh, like Borderlands, you know? It has that, that same kind of art style. <clears throat> so if you're into that, check that out. That will be coming out on May 20th. Uh, there's another series, another post-apocalyptic series about a group of survivors that are it's one of those i don't know it's, it's like one of those where they have to survive themselves you know while surviving the aftermath same thing it's called the pact it's a i believe it's a roku exclusive it's on roku 
Now, the cool thing is it's, is it's entirely free. It's not only free on Roku, but it's free on their website too. You can go, you can literally go to the Roku channel dot Roku dot com and you can look up the pact P A C T and the entire season is right there. Now it looks like there's only six episodes. So when I say entire season, this is probably a little teaser, you know, to get you, to get you ready. Uh, but this whole thing released at once, all six episodes released on February 22nd, which I understand that was two months ago, right? I'm a little, a little behind on this, but uh, Bill actually showed this to me, uh, showed it to the group uh, and said, you know, this just came into my radar. Basically, it looks pretty cool. Free is always good, right? I mean, you can't beat free. So uh, I'm going to check it out. I, I started watching the first episode. It looks, um, I don't know. It, it looks good. And again, you know, I talk about shows like Black uh, Black Summer and Z Nation and stuff like that. It looks very much like that. Group of survivors trying to survive, doing their thing. You know, they fight with each other. It's, it's kind of, it, it's, it goes on a lot like that. There are a lot of shows like that to the point where it's like, oh, another one of those. But, you know, that's kind of our thing, right? As post-apocalyptic fans, we, you know, the survival aspect and how would we survive not only the disaster, but also how would we survive ourselves? That's kind of the whole thing but but the the intrigue there the interest is in the characters themselves right the how you know how can we relate to these characters or how can we not relate to them how can they be uh someone we know from work who we hate you know and like how would we if you know if, if the end of the world happened and we were at work how would we survive with these people we hate at our job or the people we love at our job or you know what i mean uh would things would the people we hate turn into our friends? Would the people we love turn into our enemies? You know, that's it's such a, I don't know, it, it's such a, a an important kind of fantasy, I guess, to think that thing, to think that stuff through. But it's in a lot of stuff. That's that's what I'm saying. All righty then. Now, one thing I wanted to talk about too. This is getting away from the, um, you know, the fiction and stuff. I've been doing streaming pretty regularly now on our Twitch channel. If you haven't checked it out, check out our Twitch channel. If you like games, I understand not everybody who listens to this likes games, but if you like games, if you like streaming, if you like Twitch, if you like staring at a 46-year-old man as he um, plays, as he stumbles his way through these games, that I have something for you. I have something for you. It's called our Twitch channel. Um, and in it, I kind of, I don't know. I kind of like stumbling through these games. I kind of, I, I do it to myself. I'm a glutton for punishment. So I'll, I'll start these games up and I won't learn anything about them. I'll learn maybe a little bit like what, you know, if they'll work on my system and stuff like that, but I'll, I'll start these games out and I'll just press stream, start streaming. And at that point, uh, is when I, I'm learning about the game at the same time at the same time you are, so you get to see all my mistakes. But I, I like to do that. I think it's fun. Uh, the interaction we get people in the chat room and, and you know, like I played this game called Kenshi um, just this week, and it's a it's been around for a while. It's been around since like 2018, and I jumped in, and I said, I, you know, I know a little bit about it. I know it's an open world game. It's supposed to be super unforgiving and really hard. Well, I jump in and I, that's true. That's absolutely true. I proved those rumors correct. Um, but the, people jumped in the chat room and they were talking to me about how, you know, like tips, how to do this part, how to do this part. And most of the, <laughs> most of what they said was good luck. You're going to need it. You know, when you start out, you don't have anything. So it, it was it's fun to me to play like that kenshi is a lot of fun actually but it's uh it is unforgiving here's an example i mean i i definitely want you to watch the the video you know if you're interested in that it's a two-hour video though that's <laughs> that's the problem i'm sitting here talking about how i love stuff in small chunks and then i make two-hour videos but um so you know you start with this little group of people you uh, can customize them. It took me a half hour at least to make my party to just to customize. And I didn't even go through that many details on them. I kind of just chose their race and class and stuff like that. And then 
went out there. Um, so we made this little outpost. We're trying to, you know, I'm trying to improve my tech and trying to learn things. And then these groups of NPCs come by and they start attacking. And so I don't engage them because I'm wearing cloth, you know, and, and carrying sticks. So we run away and we watch from a distance as they ransack our place, right? So then I go back and then I find there's actually dead bodies there. I'm looting the bodies. I mean, it, it's it's kind of like a movie. It's like you're playing in a movie, you know, and, and I so I had fun with it. Uh, I do plan to play that game more often, probably next week. I, I'm trying to get to the point where I can stream twice a week because right now I only stream on Tuesdays at about 4, yeah, 4 p.m. Eastern. But I'd like to stream more than that, maybe uh, space it out a little bit. So then I can play my other game that I've fallen in love with, <laughs> which is called Planet Crafter. Now, Planet Crafter is only a demo at this point. But I played through it. I really enjoyed it. It's very much like No Man's Sky. If you've ever played No Man's Sky, uh, it's like a very dumbed down version of No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky is an incredible game. It's like beyond what I have time to really play. So this is like a dumbed down version. So I started playing it. It's fun. Uh, again, it's only a demo though. So I feel like you know my progress is going to be erased once the real game comes out. It, it, it won't carry over. So I don't want to put too much time into it um i don't know we'll see but at the you know at the moment i'm having fun with it um so i, I kind of want to split my time and do maybe more survival games like icarus and, and planet craft or even no man's sky and then have another day for post-apocalyptic games you know mad max and, and fallout and, and stuff like that so that's what i'm thinking of doing if i can get to that point uh this summer you know, I'll have more time. School will be over for the kids and all that stuff. So I'll have more time. So, yeah, we'll see if I can do that. But, yeah, if you are not into games, I apologize for the last 10 minutes, whatever it was that I talked about it. Um, now, one last thing I want to talk about before I go is the YouTube Roundup. Uh, I do this Roundup every week. It's my favorite YouTube videos. I, you know, I have search terms and stuff like that that pop up. I go through these videos during the week and I save my favorites uh, and I do this every week. And and I not only do I do that with, with YouTube videos, I also do it with Kickstarter stuff. But the Kickstarter stuff, when I write the article for that, it gets expensive because I always find something that I want to back. <laughs> it's, at least I don't do that with these YouTube videos. But anyway, so this week's YouTube videos, we have a, uh, a gameplay video from a game called Humanity. It's like humanity, but with a Z at the end, a capital Z at that. So as you can imagine, it's a zombie, um, a zombie survival game, right? Zombie horror survival. Very much like something like Project Zomboid, but better graphics, I would say. Um, so there's that. If you, you know, if you're interested in that, you check that out. There's a, a movie, a little short film. It's only an eight minute film called Beans. And I'm not sure when it came out. I think it came out a couple years ago, like 2020, I think. Wow, 2020 was a couple years ago. That's crazy. Um, but it's about this guy. I'll, I won't tell you the whole thing because it's an eight-minute film. And I'll spoil it. If I if I spend one minute explaining the, the premise, I'll, I'll spoil it. Basically, it's called Beans. There's uh, a guy trying to survive and he finds beans. And then he's trying to open the beans. And it's... It gets better than that. I can't really, I don't know. It's it's pretty good. And so the the main draw for me, the reason I saved this on here is because the main guy reminds me of Dennis Hopper. Dennis Hopper is a brilliant, was, he's not with us anymore. He was a, a brilliant actor. Apocalypse Now, stuff like that, you know, Speed even. Um, just a, a crazy guy, right? And so this main character in this, this short little film, this guy just does a wonderful job. I really like it. Definitely worth your eight minutes to watch that. Uh, and then we also have a uh, nuclear snail tutorial video on ripping clothing. Now, if you're a costumer, then you know that uh, nuclear snail is kind of the, he's the OG grandfather of um, of making videos on how to distress clothing for, ap you know, apocalyptic costumes, right? For cosplay and stuff like that. Um, he'd made some crazy videos like almost 10 years ago about like dragging 
your leather jacket behind your car in a in a gravel field to you know to distress it and and getting this uh, thing he calls the shredder and uh, shredding clothes with it to make it look distressed. So he's kind of updating that shredder tutorial that he did a long time ago and uh, and using different tools, using like serrated knives and a saw blade and all this other stuff. So it's kind of cool. If you're into that, it's very cool. Uh, then there's a little tiny short two-minute snippet of a podcast called uh, Dumb Cool Weird Podcast. And they talked about the Scooby-Doo post-apocalyptic theory. You know, it's this theory that, um, that Scooby-Doo, if you, if you watch the show back in the 70s, whatever, was it even the 60s? Yeah, it might have even been like late 60s, 70s. A lot of the, the background for the show, everything looked destroyed, right? And so some people say, well, it's just because they lived in a a scary part of town. That's where they would, you know, go do their, their mysteries, solve their mysteries was in the scary part of town where things were dilapidated. Well, some people are saying it's not just that it's actually a post-apocalyptic wasteland. So they touch on this, which will get you started down that rabbit hole of looking up post-apocalyptic fan theories, which will then lead you to the Aladdin theory, which is one of my favorites saying that uh, essentially Aladdin takes place tens of thousands of years after the apocalypse and it's not in the desert of arabia it's actually in a desert wasteland and i think that's kind of it's you know it's ridiculous because actually the the creators of aladdin said that is not true at all that's not what they made the show for this kid's cartoon um but it's funny to me to to like go down that path and i love like alternate history stuff anyway so it, it kind of goes hand in hand with that uh, next thing I have on this list is Plague. Plague is a movie. It's an Australian movie all the way back from 2014. Now, 2014 was almost, I was eight years ago, right? I was going to say almost 10 years ago, but I'm just going to slow myself down and say it was eight years ago. <laughs> and uh, that's a long time ago. So this movie, it's another one of those. Zombie horror, you know, um, desperate group of survivors surviving not only the the zombies, but also themselves, you know, it's, it's that, that same thing I say that, you know, happens all the time, but this is a, it's a good movie. And the, the kicker here is that this is the entire movie. This is a full movie on YouTube. You can watch the whole thing for free. Now I have to say, I include these a lot in these, uh, in these roundups I do, because I feel like they, it's, you know, I'm frugal, right? Is the word cheap or frugal? I, I'll just say frugal. It's the nice way of saying it. I'm frugal and I like to watch free movies when I can, you know? I do have subs to a bunch of random stuff that <laughs> Netflix, Amazon, and Hulu and all that. But, um, you know, free stuff is always good. So I know I empathize, I empathize, I can't even say it, empathize with people who uh, want to find free movies and here you go here's a free movie but the thing is the kicker here is that youtube usually finds out and they usually remove these movies in a couple days um so there are like if you go back and you look at old youtube roundups sometimes there's videos that are no longer available because youtube caught wind of someone was watching a free movie we must stop that immediately yeah uh yeah so that's it for that roundup pretty short what is that five one two three four five yeah five videos this time uh you know fun little time watching these little videos again this is like an anthology of youtube it all comes back full circle right uh all right so what do we have coming up we have next week we have a show called bubble on netflix i'm looking at our calendar right now i don't know what bubble is I'm going to have to find out what that is for next week. Bubble. It sounds, it reminds me of like Michael Jackson's monkey in the 80s. It was named Bubbles. <laughs> but I'm not sure what it is. I'll check that out. Um, and then we have in May, Vampire in the Garden premieres on Netflix. Why? There's a lot of Netflix stuff. What's going on with that? Um, HBO's The Last of Us is expected to wrap filming in June. Uh, also, Jurassic World Dominion premieres june 10th so i'm getting a little ahead of myself but my point is 
we have a lot of stuff on our calendar that goes pretty far, you know, months and months ahead of where we're at right now. Uh, so check out that calendar. We update it all the time. And we, uh, you know, for, for, we like to keep track of what's coming up, right? Because it's, it's kind of a big deal, right? There's so much going on. There's, it's cool to keep track of it. So make sure you check that out. Make sure you check out the main website. We have lots more on there. You know, what I've talked about today is mainly the stuff that, uh, that interested me to talk about, you know. But there's also a lot more. There's stuff about Attack on Titan, of course. Attack on Titan is actually our biggest kind of, you know, most popular topic on the site. Uh, even though I don't talk about it a lot here in the podcast, it's huge. Um, we also have, we have a lot of articles about when do certain shows start? Like when does Pacific Rim, the black season two premiere? Um, when is the next fear of the walking dead? There's a show called, uh, where is it at? The executioner and her way of life. Uh, these are anime and it's, there's a lot of, you know, guides, I think is the word I'm looking for. A lot of guides about when shows are coming out. So check those out if you're interested in that, if you're interested in in finding out when your favorite show might come out. And yeah, there's a lot of a lot of great stuff on the site. Also, we have social media. We have, we're everywhere. We're on YouTube and uh, Discord. We have a Discord. We're on Twitter and Facebook and TikTok and Instagram. And uh, yeah, it, our Discord is, is really cool. If you go there, you can actually, you know, find a, a room, like a topic room and talk about a specific thing. And if uh, if something gets big enough, you know, like a new show, we'll probably make a new room for it and you can go in there and talk about whatever. Um, right now, you know, our Attack on Titan room is huge. People are always talking in there. Uh, we have general chat. We have we even have voice chat. If you want to play some games and uh, and use our voice chat, you can do that. So yeah, our Discord is pretty awesome. Definitely check that out. And you can say hi to me. You can go on there and say, hi, Sean. And then I uh, might say hi back like three days later when I check it. (laughs) That's not true. I go on there every day. All right. So thanks everyone for listening. I appreciate it. And uh, again, check out our Twitch to watch me play some games. Check out the website, all our social media. And uh, until next time, make sure that you stay alive out there and always be ready for the big one. Bye-bye.